Hey everybody, Jenny Sauer here. Welcome to the End User Tools Presents European Cherry Fruit Fly Data Collection. And this will be using the ArcGIS Field Maps mobile application. Uh, European Cherry Fruit Fly uses eTrap where there is intense um, trapping going on and the ArcGIS Field Maps application, just in a few states where it might be a little smaller or a little less um, intense. Um, those I believe are Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Washington. So welcome to the European Cherry Fruit Fly data collection using ArcGIS field maps. I've got a little confidence poll um, pulled up, and if you wouldn't mind just kind of letting me know how you're feeling. It's a little um, confidence check-in this morning, just to see how you feel about collecting data for ECFF. Um, the options are being feeling like a newbie, or this is the first time you've collected data here for this program. You feel like you need a refresher, you want to know updates, Maybe you're a little worried about the new app, the ArcGIS Field Maps application, or um, unsure, or I see about half of you already have said feeling good, no worries. That's awesome. I'm great to see. That's great to see. I'm glad to hear that from you all. A couple things that I want to talk about today. I want to make sure, and many of you might already know this. I want to make sure that you are aware of a couple of things. I'm going to put this in the chat here. First of all, I want to show you where you can find some resources. And it, most of you are getting to know this really well. Basically, this one ought to be your go to for all things training support both written and video training, which you can do at your own pace when you have the time. We have a mobile del mobile data collection tools website that's public facing on the APHIS website for all of you to kind of duck into when you need it. The top half is all document related and the bottom half is all a video gallery. This training here today is going to show up under the pest program category and so it'll show up right here if you need to review it later or are curious about what happened or want to share it with someone else. The training events page is of importance because this is going to be real fast today. And if you have other questions, this end user tools office hours is a great resource that just started up this week. And every Monday for an hour, the end user tools group will hold office hours. So think of it sort of like, you know, at the teacher is in. Um, so if you need to come in and ask a question, you can hop into the, this link, go ahead and ask your question and leave or stay and ask more or listen in or whatever you want to do. But um, we are just going to make ourselves available virtually to you. Wherever you are, you can stop in and, and ask your questions. So I want to make sure you know about that. In addition, all other trainings are here waiting for you. Maybe that's how you found this one today. Just kind of hop into the link and going back one step to the main page, your training documents are here under pest program specific training documents as well. So there's European cherry fruit fly and a user manual and quick reference. So keep those handy for yourselves. Secondly, we have a quiz in the chat that I'm going to throw in there in just a second, which will take you through a few questions that are supposed to be real easy, I hope. I try to make them easy if I can. And um, really what it does is if you submit it in the end, if you submit it, it's going to give you an automated email. And that email could be handy if your supervisor wants to know that you've completed training on data collection. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about. Um, that's important, right? So we're going to talk about this field apps field maps application. It's a new app. We're going to talk about that and um, hopefully ease any concern you might have about using it. Um, it's very similar to Collector. So if you're not a newbie and you've used that a little bit in the past, um, it's going to feel extremely familiar to you all. We're going to talk about the enterprise URL, which is how you sign into these apps and uh, typing that in very carefully and how that works. We're also going to talk about where training maps are hosted. This year they're hosted in a stage environment. So there is a separate URL and we want to make sure we're in the right one when we're collecting official data. We're just going to review the disconnected workflow. I know this is sounding like it's starting to probably sound pretty redundant to some of you all because we talk about it every time, but just a quick overview. We're going to talk about uh, trapping workflow 
just in general, but also how it's specific to European cherry fruit fly. And the data form we'll look at, I'm going to share my um, iPad view so you can have a look at that and what it, what it looks like. And we're going to kind of chat through some caution areas. All right, so what is field maps? Field maps is a mobile data collection tool. We've had an introduction to it a couple times live in January and in February, and we're going to do another one March 17th. So if you want to attend a live training and see how it works and a few of its features, you're welcome to that. There is also um, 10 videos that take you through all of the features step by step, so you can kind of bite bite at a time it if you like and and a user guide so please check that out and make yourself uh, comfortable with field maps what is it it's it's kind of the company's idea of combining all five of these old applications and it's built on the collector code so it's really like basically like the collector application with some of the functionality of these other applications. And for the most part, just to set your mind at ease, we've gone real easy on using any of those features and kept it really as similar to last year as possible. And so if you've used this ECFF map last year, it's gonna look very much the same as it did last year. Some of you are familiar with this sign-in page. When you first open the, the app, it's gonna ask you to sign in. And this is what I'm talking about with that enterprise portal. You are in PPQ always going to choose this bottom option, sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise. And it's going to first ask you to type in manually. So you're going to do that with care, um, the URL to that portal, which is this. And then after you've typed it in, it's going to hold it it's going to look more like this view. Um, when you tap sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise, you're going to get this little pop up and it's going to hold on to that uh, manually typed in um, URL. So that's the one that you would like to have typed in when you are officially entering data in the European cherry fruit fly map. And what I kind of started the topic on already was the fact that our training maps are not held in that one. <laughs> so it kind of puts a little chink in your habits, right? So official data collection is now occurring in this MRP environment enterprise portal. So that MRP is right there in the URL. And then the hint for training maps is that it's got this STG. It still says MRP, but we have maps dash stage basically like a staging environment and the training maps are an exact copy of the official data collection maps but for your use to practice in so it's really important that you be sure you're signed in to the right url to collect official data official data should never be collected in a training map so if you are in a training map it is for training for practice for play Today I'm going to use it to demonstrate on the iPad and the training maps all are titled with capitals, all capitals training in them. And the base maps are usually kind of ugly, like they're just a plain gray. Um, so that's a good tip off if you're in a map and you're wondering, um, but be sure you're in signed in to the correct URL to record official data. So we'll have a look at that um, also together. Disconnected mode. We know how this works. Um, officially, the ArcGIS field maps application is designed to collect data while disconnected. It's super handy for us out in the field not to be connected. And, um, and it's a great thing to use um, because it takes the load off of that constant portal um, connection. So basically, the way it goes is you download a map area to your device, you disconnect from Wi-Fi, collect data, then once you're done and back to a reliable Wi-Fi connection, you connect and synchronize that data back up to the online map. Um, trapping workflows. The first visit to a location is referred to as placing the trap. Last year, we had to also record a trap activity of install. And this year, we've that burden's been lifted. So we're relieved of that two-step process on the first visit. The first visit placing a trap records the location that latitude, longitude, the geospatial spot on the map. And so you'll see on the map a symbol for that location. That's placing the trap. And in that trap, um, in that data form, there is an install date, which lets us know that if you've placed the trap, you've installed it. 
then all future visits are a trapping activity. And those are recorded related to that location. And there can be many, many trap activities. So one of the workflows that happens with um, European cherry fruit fly is sometimes these traps have to be relocated. So maybe it's been placed on the first visit in one spot and many visits happened and then it needs to be moved. Well, some of you are probably familiar with this, but there are two data entries that have to happen on that original trap site. One would be a trap activity of removed, and then the trap status needs to be updated from active to inactive. So those two things have to happen to the original spot. And then you kind of walk the trap, you know, just visualize yourself walking to a new location and you go ahead and place the trap as you would have any trap. This original location, these data entries can be confusing sometimes. A lot of folks think that if you remove the trap that the symbol should disappear or be deleted from the map view, and that is not the case. It's actually really important data entry that that symbol remain. All of the history of that trap, its original placement, all of its trap activities should remain. That symbol should be there and the last trap activity should be remove. I'm going to walk you through looking at that and seeing what that looks like um, just to make sure, but it's really important that you know when you record a trap activity of remove, that symbol is going to stay on the map. It's not going to be deleted, and that's correct. Let's have a look at what that data form looks like. So I'm going to pull up my iPad, um, and similar to other apps, it jumps you right into the previous map. Actually, I'm going to close this out so you can see the full screen of the iPad. This is a PPQ configured iPad. This is my PPQ configured iPad, and I do a lot of testing, so there's probably some apps on here that you're not familiar with or wouldn't see on yours, but these survey apps should all appear for now, including this quick capture. And Collector is not going to be used this year. And if you accidentally open it and try to, you will not be able to, to record data in the ECFF map this year. So not Collector, but just two over here. We want to be in field maps. And we're going to tap and open field maps. And I can tell right away that I, well, for one thing, I know that I'm signed into that stage or the training environment. I know that I did. If I needed to, I could tap my profile and sign out and then sign back in to be sure of that. But some real good hints here, are all these maps that I have downloaded areas on are all titled training and the thumbnail picture says training on it. And this group here, PPQ and user tools training is here. So that tells me I am in that stage environment. And so that's correct. That's where I want to be. I'm going to go ahead and open this previously downloaded area. I've got a few local edits already sitting there that I've been testing out for ECFF. I'm going to open my downloaded area. And you can see I've got um, a sync button here. I have a layers button. And we have a reference layer for the previous year's trap sites that is defaulted to off. If I want to, I can I can toggle to turn layers on or off. I'm going to leave that one off though. And I have a search button. If I wanted to search for a certain trap ID, I could use this button to do that. I have an overflow menu. Um, probably the, the big ones that you're going to want, uh, want to check out are the legend, which shows the symbols for all of the traps on the layer that you have visible. So that's showing our current layer. Um, also, we've got the new feature, the big new feature that you'll probably notice in ArcGIS field maps is this markup layer. It allows you to literally mark up um, or make marks, markings, drawings, um, areas, notes on a layer, and it saves it as a markup layer. And um, this feature is could be pretty cool. I could see some useful things, maybe some personal notes on, um, on certain trap areas or where you um, some notes for yourself, but the key on the markup layer is that it really does just live on your device unless you share it out somehow. So it is not an official data collection layer and be careful what you put there because it really is, it's like writing in a diary. It's kind of like a little field notebook. Um, so unless you're able to share it, it's just gonna stay there for you. So that's those. Um, in order to add data, you hit the add button here at the bottom right corner, 
And that opens the first question, which there are two trap types to choose from for ECFF. I'm going to go ahead and choose a trap. And then it opens the data form. Like most data forms, you have required fields indicated by a gray asterisk. Some of them may not be, like this trap site comments. Um, previously mentioned, this install date indicates that it is being installed on this location on this date. And you can see the trap status is pulled in as active. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of fill in um, things as I go. If, if your next field is going to use the keyboard as well, you can either hit done and close the keyboard or you get this next option. And it'll just jump to the next field for you to fill in. You can see that that trap that I originally selected is pulled in as default. Uh, following survey protocol is not what something I can do. So this is something you're going to want to make sure that you check in on and make sure that you are doing that as you're filling this out. But I don't know that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit install date. One thing about this install date, if you tap that, it's going to open a calendar. And there is a restriction here. I'm going to go back a couple months to show you to only this year, 2022. So I can't select anything outside of the year, really. And if I were to accidentally tap a date that is not today, I can update that really quickly by just hitting this blue today. And tapping this field again will close the calendar. And I really like that because I have a tendency to accidentally tap a date on the calendar. So I've filled all of this out. Um, I believe correctly. Actually, I'm going to take that out. And you can see that it's telling me, hey, that's required. I, I filled it all out except for that one required field. And I'm going to go ahead and hit submit just to show you. Uh, submit will allow you to hit that button, but it will give you a little message that there is a feature that needs to be completed. Unable to submit, no point has been specified. So that's one thing. We need to add the point. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move it away from where I am so you can see that. And I'm going to add the point. OK, so maybe now I feel good about it and I still haven't noticed. I'm going to hit submit again. And it says one attribute failed. And you can see in red that required is really showing up. And if I hit view, it's going to try to center that for me. So OK, fine, I'll fill that out. And now I'll hit submit. And there we go. Let's talk through a, a future visit. So let's say now I'm going to come visit this guy. And in fact, I would like to relocate it. So in order to open the trapping activity form, I have to select it like I've just done. And you can see it's selected because it's got this blue halo around that symbol and the data form opened up for me. So I, I would be very careful to be sure that I'm selecting the correct tra trap. I don't have a lot of dense traps happening here, so I'm pretty sure that's the right one. I could check my trap ID. And in order to add an activity, I can either hit this link button at the bottom or I can scroll up a little bit and hit the link button again. And this description is ECFF activities for the year. And I can see that there's been, there was nothing done at that visit um, on 218. I'm gonna go ahead and add a trap activity and I'm gonna put in my name. And remember to relocate, there were two actions that we need to take on this trap. The first one is the trap activity of remove, right? So let's go ahead and remove. And I'm not going to fill out any of that. I'm going to write test in the comments. And I'm going to put in this activity date as today. And I'm going to close that up and check it over and submit. So that's the first one, remove. Secondly, we need to mark the trap inactive. And we're still in the trap activity form. So I'm going to close out of that back to the main data form. And here it's still marked active. And in order to edit this form, I'm going to hit edit and open these fields up to editing and change this to inactive and submit. So now we've done our two steps on this removed trap. Number one, the last activity was remove. And number two, we marked it as inactive. And then we would just go ahead and walk our way over to where the trap is going and hit this plus sign to add or place a new trap. So that's how the remove works. And as you can see here, that symbol stayed, but the last activity was remove and it is marked inactive. And that's correct. So that's how remove um, that's how remove works. That's how a relocate works.
So the last thing to talk through is caution areas. We talked about how there is a real and a training URL to sign into. We used a training map today and no real data was input into that training map. No official or real, in quotes, data goes into a training map. That should always go into that MRP official data collection enterprise site. We want to try to use disconnected mode whenever possible. Um, watch that submit button, but it will give you an error and it will try to inform you on what you've missed. Be careful with your data collection. I know this seems like we're kind of hitting hitting things again with, uh, you know, of course you know how to enter your data, but it's just a good reminder. When you fill out a data form, look it over one last time. Give it another eye and make sure that you've entered everything correctly. The daily data sync, we didn't talk about too much, but you wanna make sure that the auto sync is off. It's important that you have control over that data sync manually so that you have a reliable Wi-Fi connection. Really the number one reason the data sync doesn't go through properly is an unreliable Wi-Fi. And so if you have auto sync going, it's gonna try to do things whenever it thinks it has a connection. So you wanna maintain control over that. Make sure that your auto sync is off and you can see that when you go to sync, there's a little toggle button there. The markup layer, be careful with it. I would love to hear how you guys use it. If, if you find a really good use, I'd love to see a little demo and see how I can share out some of your ideas, but be careful with it. Um, it does live on your device. It is not an official data collection layer and it's not shared out. So be careful using it. Just view it as your private notes if you can. As long as you're aware of that, let me know how it works. We talked about a lot of things today, but you still might need help. Of course, we all find those things happen. Survey protocol for for fruit fly, European cherry fruit fly and fruit fly are all handled by Shahara Yusnik. iPad issues, go to IT. Portal access, start with your supervisor, but there are some tools here too if you find that you need some extra support. And all things training go back to this mobile data collection tools web page page keep an eye on it bookmark it and um, watch for new things there um, but always feel free to reach out if you want a little bit more support that quiz um, hopefully you have the right quiz there to um, to ecff take that quiz as like a summary maybe you've taken it along with me which is fine by me totally fine by me but that quiz will just kind of lock in that you did get the points that were shared here today and you will get an automated email that you can share out with your supervisor that says you completed this course for me i like to get those things it feels like a little bit of a kudos um, do with that what you will but you do get a little email that says you completed this we talked about a few things that you might have already known and hopefully gave you some updates on the app, how to use that URL to sign in for training maps and official maps, how to use the disconnected workflow properly. We talked through trapping workflows, um, including that relocate one that might be a little difficult to understand the data form and caution areas today. But with all of that said, you still might have questions. Um, so here's my information. Please feel free to reach out. What I'm gonna do is hang out for at least another 12 or so minutes. And if you have questions of any kind, I would love for you to just go ahead and unmute and ask them or type them in the chat. But this is my information. Um, remember that end user tools office hours every Monday, feel free to jump in as you start using the app and get more comfortable. If you find things that you have questions about or want to review, jump into those office hours and ask those questions. So with that, I will let you all go if you want to. Um, and I will hang on just for a few more minutes if you have any questions. Hey, Jen, it's Brooke. At the end of the season, we discard or like completely remove the traps and take them down. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we'll still have the points up. Um, so we'll start to bog down over the years if we keep adding more points. Okay, so here's how that workflow works. Every year, the map gets refreshed. And so remember, we looked at this layers, layers menu. You have last year's 
traps here and that's what you would have is like a reference layer so at the end of the year that um and that's a great question brooke those traps from the previous year get added to a reference layer which is not editable but it's just there for reference i'm in colorado where there really are not a lot so turning that on doesn't show me much in my map but turning on the last year's reference layer will show you all those traps that were discarded from that layer and you get this refreshed map for 2022 this year. So it's only going to show you the map, the map of all of the traps for this year. Does that answer kind of what you were looking for? Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah, we can just turn off past years so we don't see them. But if we really wanted to, we could also turn them on and see where we were and that'd be cool too. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you do get a um, end user tools handles the kind of cleanup pass through between years. And um, and so we we create this last year's layer for you to look at, but it's not an active. It's not going to bog down anything in the application, and it's not editable anymore. At a certain point, there's that shut off of the previous year and turn on of the new year, um, and that's all handled through Shahara Usnix as the um, nom. So if you have any questions about when that happens or how that decision is made, I'd I'd head to her. Thanks for asking. That was a good question. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Um, where do you find the survey? And I'm sorry, I don't know McCormick. I don't know your first name. Um, the way that this comes into Zoom is kind of crazy. The surveys are shared out to groups. And so you have to be a member of the group. So for instance, even in the training portal, all the sorry, whoops, all of the training maps are shared to this group. PPQ end user tools training, you can, in this case, you can add, you can join the group yourself. You can sign in from any browser, a desktop or, or Safari, even here on the iPad, and you can find this group and you can hit join. It's allowed to everyone to join themselves, but in the official MRP enterprise site where, um, where the actual maps for official data collection are shared, you have to be added by the group manager and you need supervisory approval. So if you don't see the group that you're looking for, which would be ECFF, it would be PPQ ECFF surveyors would be the name of the group. If you don't see that group and you don't seem to find the map, you're, you probably need to be added to that group. So talk to your supervisor about getting added to, your, to that group. 